Hi everybody, welcome to today's video. Today we are gonna be talking about a three letter word. It is a technology that has been around forever. In fact, some people might actually call it a four letter word, if you know what I mean. Uh, but it's a three letter word that we think is going to be increasingly important and linked to a lot of generative AI applications, a lot of retrieval augmented generation is people are looking to do more complex patterns around function calling and agents. So what you see on the screen are three very common three letter words. In fact, you've probably already seen like 10 different demos that start with an LLM, some form of RAG, and usually using some form of a PDF document. Now, one of the things that we've really tried to highlight with LLMware is another three-letter word, which is CPU. And it's not that we don't like GPUs. We use GPUs for training all of our models. We use CUDA, we use GPUs for a lot of acceleration and inference. But one of the things that we've been trying to do is how do you increasingly miniaturize and make more accessible a lot of these technologies so they can be deployed more cost effectively and they can be leveraged by a wider group of people. So CPU is another three letter word that increasingly we think um, is gonna be really important to the future of LLMs in 2024. But the last three letter word, the last three letter word that I wanted to get to and it's a technology that has been around forever. And in fact, there are probably people listening to this saying, and I wish it was gone, which is SQL. And why do we mention SQL in the same breath as LLMs and, and RAG? Well, let's take a minute and let's actually look, what we believe is going to be an increasingly important data pipeline and workflow in 2024 and beyond as enterprises are really looking to deploy generative AI, next generation prompting and function calling, to really solve problems and drive automation in the enterprise. And what that comes down to is how do LLMs and how do prompts start to connect to the most prevalent and high value data stores in an enterprise, most of which are stored in SQL tables. Well, the starting point for this is, is you have somebody off on the side, maybe they're asking a natural language question or, or they wanna have a prompt. Basic question, perhaps from somebody in sales and marketing, how many customers are at a gold level? Now, the answer to that information happens to be sitting in a SQL table, but the path to get there is a little more complicated than a typical data pipeline involving um, prompts and LLMs. The first piece of it is you need to be able to take that query in natural language and you wanna be able to feed it into some type of text to SQL LLM. General purpose, large scale LLMs have been trained to do this. Some of the coding LLMs have been trained to do this. There are some special purpose text to SQL LLMs that have been targeted to generate this. We have a slim SQL model, a 1 billion parameter model that we've trained that all it does is take in text and output SQL. But there's a hook here, there's a complexity. It's a little different than most other use cases. And that's because you can't just convert a natural language query into SQL. Any conversion into SQL requires this missing link. And that missing link is the table schema. Without knowing that table schema, it becomes very hard to speak in any kind of SQL, meaningful SQL construct about how to translate that query. And now how do you get that? Well, Ultimately, to get a SQL table, you have to pull it out of a SQL database. For anybody that's done you know, structured SQL database programming or even taken a, a 101 course on SQL, this is typically what a table schema looks like. It includes the attributes, the columns, if you will, along with the data types. So you need that basic schema to marry together. The prompt engineering here is taking that context table together with that query and then the model is gonna give you what you want, which is you know, a well-formed, translated into SQL output that leverages the information that's in that SQL table. And so to train these types of models, you have to do the same thing. You have to create a lot of table schema. You have to take together those table schema with the samples and then translate it into SQL. Now, from a prompt engineering point of view, this isn't that complicated. It's just concatenating two different strings. The hard part about this is, where do you actually get real table data so you can start running this end-to-end -end experiment and trying to figure out how you can optimize the right types of prompts to go from that high-level query that's coming from a business person in plain English to convert it into a SQL statement and then ultimately to take that next step of actually querying that database and getting the retrieval and getting that answer. Because at the end of the day, converting something from text to SQL is just one small component of the process. Ultimately, you wanna be able to use that SQL output, query the database then, and then come full circle to actually get the output from that. Now, what makes this even more complicated is that oftentimes this is in the middle 
of a much larger and much more complex LLM-based workflow. There's perhaps some input into this process. Perhaps there's some named entity information, or perhaps there's been some other query or prompt that's leading us to a question like that. How many customers are at a gold level? And then the output of that, we want to be able to programmatically take that output and again, pass it into the next step of a process or, or into a prompt. So how do we actually start you know, hardening a module like this so that we can start building industrialized text to SQL um, queries? Now, in a lot of the examples that we do, I'll, I'll often highlight, hey, this is just ready to run. Run it and it's going to work and it's going to work with a high degree of accuracy. I won't make that claim here because in looking at this end-to-end -end process, there are a lot of things that can go wrong. It takes a lot of experimentation. And that's one of the reasons that within LLMware, we've been really thinking about how do we start bringing together all the tools that you need, all the different components, so that you can rapidly start to experiment with these sorts of pipelines, start building some, some prototypes and building capability around how to do this whole text to SQL process. So first thing, as most of you know, if you've used LLMware in the past, we have persistent data stores that are built entirely into the parsing, text chunking, and indexing pipeline. We support Postgres, we support Mongo. We also support SQLite. SQLite we're actually gonna use here because it's a great way to do it without having to install anything, without having to use Docker, without using any kind of production data store. It's a great way to experiment and experiment locally and privately. What we've also done is we've put an abstraction layer. So the information that goes into Postgres, SQL, or Mongo is all queried in LLM or the exact same way. So regardless of how it's stored in the underlying kind of data store, there's this abstraction layer which enables you to sort of work across these multiple components. As I mentioned earlier in our slim rollout, we did roll out a SQL tool. There are some other really, really good models that we're experimenting with right now that we're going to be bringing into this as well. We want you to look at a wide range of text to SQL conversion models that you can bring into this pipeline. And then we've rolled out these two new classes, our LLM FX class and our SQL tables class, really with the intent of optimizing your know, rapid experimentation. So how does all of this work? And again, I'm going to show you a couple of examples, but where it really starts is you install the Slim SQL tool. It's in open source. It's in a Hugging Face repository with LLMware. You download and you install that tool. With LLMware, we actually come with SQLite in the box. It's a fully embedded database. It doesn't require any upfront installation or configuration. It all is running locally on your machine. And then what we include with the Slim SQL tool, with that model, is we actually include a sample CSV file. The sample CSV file is a very, very simplified customer table. And then we provide the tools so that you can very quickly take a basic CSV file, convert it into a table, and save it in a SQLite experimental database that's all running locally on your machine. What this then gives us then is a table and a schema because we've just created it. So we now have that table and schema information. And then when we come back to basically our prompting inference cycle, we start with that query. We have access to this table schema. So we can refer to our customer table and we, we know how to access that and what it is. We then create that prompt. And then once we've created that prompt, we have the ability then to query the database and then get the output that we're looking for. We also built in a bunch of tools so you can very rapidly take down, delete tables or delete the entire database to really promote active experimentation as you're trying to build out some of these pipelines. Hopefully this has helped just to set the context. As I said, we really believe this three letter word SQL is gonna be an extremely important thing to add to your toolkit in 2024 in working with LLMs. How do you ultimately start marrying together natural language queries, which LLMs do so well, with the highest value structured data in an enterprise? It is a key area of innovation and priority for us. And so what we're gonna do, hopefully this little chalk talk was helpful to motivate the problem. What we're gonna do next is we're actually gonna flip over. I'm gonna show you a couple of examples we have in the LLM or repository that you can go and you can run through this exact pipeline. And most importantly to all of this, you can do all of this running locally on your own machine. Because as many of you probably know, if you work in an enterprise, if you work in a company, if you go to a database administrator, you go to some system controller, somebody that actually owns an important database or a customer table, and you say, hey, you know, I'm really thinking about doing some experimentation. It would be super, super cool if you could just give me access to this table, because I'd like to take that table information and have some Gen A model that's gonna be querying it and doing all these interesting things with it. The answer is gonna come back a resounding no. Tables tend to be very, very locked down. They are sensitive information in an enterprise, let alone 
to create an environment where you could do this type of experimentation. And so one of the things we've tried to do is put all of these pieces in the box so you can run it locally, you can run it privately, you can bring it up and tear it down so that you can rapidly start to figure out how to incorporate this into some of your pipelines. So anyway, I hope that you've enjoyed this Chalk Talk. And again, stay tuned. We're going to flip right over into the first demo of how to get started using the text-to-SQL models in LMware. Thank you, everybody. Take care and have a great day.